Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Red Game Telecom video, we're going to be discussing a whole slew of rumours concerning Ryzen, Vega, and the RX 490. What? You thought the RX 490 rumours were dead and buried? No, apparently Bethesda have unearthed them. As recent Fallout 4 specifications for the high-resolution texture pack 9 actually list either a GTX 1080 or an RX 490 as the recommended GPU, which is, well... Interesting and rather bizarre, but we'll get into that in just a moment. Let's first of all talk about SKUs of Ryzen. So, Ryzen is going to be coming out at some point over the next couple of months from the rumours. And from what we know about the processor, it is going to have multiple SKUs available. AMD have actually confirmed this to me in an interview that there will be multiple SKUs available at launch, but they're not telling us what those are. Canard PC, you might recall, were the chaps who got an engineering sample Ryzen CPU. There are a couple of caveats with that. First of all, the logic of the processor wasn't finalised until there was a bug. This basically meant that SMT or the IOPS cache, if memory serves, had a problem. Basically, you could either have SMT enabled or IOPS cache enabled, but if you had IOPS cache and SMT both enabled, there was basically a performance hit and a possibility of the core um, basically getting confused between the two threads. In other words, it would think thread 1 data was thread 2 data in some instances and cause some major issues with performance. And on top of that as well, the clock speeds were not final. It was about 3.15 gigahertz versus 3.4. Even so, they found that Ryzen was doing pretty well in terms of performance. But the same individuals, who are of course a French publication, have information concerning that. And they said on Twitter, and I quote, I'm not 100% sure because it's all marketing, but I expect five SKUs to be announced on March the 2nd. So there's going to be two 8-core 16-thread processors. That's not new. We've known there was going to be a high-end version and a lower-end version. A 6-core 12-thread, a 4-core 8-thread, and a 4-core 4-thread. Now... I'm not really sure who to believe at this point, because I... Here's, here's what I've heard. Basically, there are multiple different stories. The first story is that the 6-core is not going to be very common. The reason behind that is because you have to have processors in pairs on the CCX. So, in other words, you can't have like free processors on the Ryzen CCX complex. It just doesn't work. So you have to have either a four, um, you either have to have four or two. Now, that means that basically you can't have, let's say, a tri-core processor. You can't have two tri-core processors together. Uh, so I try CCXs together. That doesn't work. So you would need to pair a four with a two. Or I guess technically, you know, it, it it's just it's just a bit weird. So it really depends on how they want to spread the SKUs. Um, I guess technically one CCX can easily be a four core eight thread. A four core uh, four thread could be one that has bugs in it or one that has say poor yields or issues with cash or whatever they end up marketing it as. And obviously the eight core 16 threads, they can segment those quite easily. Ones that have higher clock speeds and capable of higher clock speeds, those would be the high end. A 16 thread, whereas the mid range or the lower end rather could be the 8 core 16 thread that has lower clocks. So the 6 core 12 thread perhaps might be more expensive than what you may anticipate. We just don't know yet. It's a bit weird. Um, anyway, I'd like, of course, to thank uh, someone for sending this information. In this case, it was Rod for Canard. But we're going to be focusing on the RX 490 for just a moment before we switch things over to Vega. So, a chap by the name of Yala has actually emailed me this link, and it's a very simple one. It's not like one of the more complex topics we've discussed, but it actually makes it kind of bizarre. So, Bethesda, as you possibly might know, are looking to put out a high-resolution texture pack for the PC. And obviously, this is also going to come to the console as well in the shape of the PS4 Pro. I guess, I'm not sure, it will also filter down to the Scorpio. Now, currently, if you take a look to their site, recommended specs, we're referring to the PC here, are the i7-5820K, the operating systems of Windows 7 or above, a GTX 1080 with 8 gigs of RAM, and 8 gigabytes of system RAM. Great. So those are the minimum specifications, but it gets a bit weird. 
because tweaktown.com managed to get it before the edit. And exactly the same thing for everything else, aside from AMD RX 498 gigabytes. Now, there are multiple ways you can interpret that. The most obvious one is, oops, typed typo, it's supposed to be the RX 480. The problem I have with that is they've not amended that to, say, the 480 now. In fact, they've just deleted the reference altogether. The second issue I have with that is it's like, if it was the GTX 1070 and they had the 480, I'd be like, okay, it's possible with the resolution texture pack and the changes they're making that the RX 480 has a slight advantage over the, 460, uh, over the GTX 1060 in this particular game, or perhaps they're just doing it because it's the, the fastest AMD GPU currently available for the next generation. They're putting it in there as a recommended fine. But to have a GTX 1080 listed as a recommended next to a 480, that would make no sense. The other issue is that this is not the first time this has happened. I don't want to go through the whole history, but we all know there have been games like Eve Valkyrie that have listed it. It's appeared on the Sapphire GPU, and it's just like, I, 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 I don't know where this is coming from. And it's really weird because it's like, it makes me wonder if AMD are really going to be focusing on on the 500 series, or if Vega is going to be the 400 series just with a rebrand, we just don't know at this point. So it's really bizarre to say the absolute least. Now the second uh, piece of news concerning GPUs at least, and the third piece of news in the video, will be memory. So Vega is going to have a couple of different parts, SKUs. The first is Vega 10, which is using HBM2. The second is going to be using, from what we understand anyway, more conventional memory, either GDDR5 or possibly R5X. So, from what we understand, AMD were going to be utilising SK Hynix. However, there have been a bit of a hiccup that's happened. Essentially, SK Hynix has updated its product data book for the first quarter of 2017, and it's a bit of a problem. Basically, it looks like they will not be putting out the clock speed of the HBM2 that AMD require to have 512 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. With the first quarter of 2017 having a density of 4 gigabytes, okay, that works well. The problem is the clock speed is only 1.6 rather than 2.0. Now, that's a problem because it means that if AMD were to utilize two stacks of this with Vega, you're only looking at about, and I say about, uh, 410 gigabytes per second of bandwidth. Uh, accurately, it's 409.6, but whatever. And that's considerably lower than Fiji, which is 512, and even lower than the GP102, which is 480, which is a bit of an owl. Now, i tell you what's a bit weird, is there have been a couple of murmurs at a few events, uh, CES, as well as, I believe, Capsation, that, well, first of all, we know the amount of memory in the GPU is 8 gigabytes, so that's two stacks, just to clarify. And we've seen, of course, the actual images of the GPU, which show two stacks of HBM2 memory. But... From what the engineer is, uh, from what people have actually said at AMD and spoken to press, so according to these individuals, the cards that have been demoed are running at 512 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. So that leads us to a couple of questions. Are AMD either going to have to choose lower end parts for the final retail samples or to opt to use Samsung? Samsung are already providing NVIDIA the chips for the GP100 cards, so it's possible that they won't really be affected by this. Ultimately, I think from a perspective of PR, it's going to also be hard to swallow less memory bandwidth than the predecessor card, so I imagine that's probably the route they're going to take. Do remember that not all Vega cards are going to have HPM2, from what we understand. There's going to be an awful lot that do have just traditional GDR5 or R5X. So in those cases, it doesn't mean a damn thing. In the future, as SK Hynix 
sort out their manufacturing and they either go with a density of 8 gigabytes or they simply increase the clock speed then things are going to change and uh, AMD can start making some changes especially if they do decide to just go with a bigger uh, well essentially if they just decide to go with a bigger interposer and stick 4 HBM2 chips on then they could certainly use SK Hynix because they'd get about 820 gigabytes per second the problem is it's going to be really prohibitively expensive for customer cards to have 16 gigabytes of HBM2 memory. So I don't think they're going to want to do that anytime soon. But with all of that said, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Uh, hopefully in the next day or two I'll start feeling well enough to where I can actually start putting in some real work. At the moment my head is still pretty uh, headachey. But after that we have a lot of stuff planned, so do stick with us. Um, yeah, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.